Let's talk about a subject that I'm trying to educate myself on in a real rush. Masks and PPE. Going into old abandoned mines is a dangerous thing to do. Not only are you contending with the possibility of rock falls and collapses, which is what I think most people would think about. You've also got things like venomous snakes, you've got wombats and other animals that could be using that mine as a den. And then there's the really nasty stuff that's a little bit more nefarious. One of the most obvious ones is silica dust. Silica is nothing more than quartz that's been crushed up and broken. And there is obviously a lot of that in the gold mine. That's what we're looking for. That silica is sitting all over the floor, all over the walls. It's a very fine dust through to a very coarse dust, but the fine stuff causes a thing called silicosis, which is the scarring of lung tissue. This stuff goes into your lungs. Your body doesn't really have a mechanism to move any great quantities of this from your lungs, so it sits in there and the tiny little pieces of extremely sharp, what is essentially glass, scar your lungs up and eventually you can't breathe and you die. That's not including things like gases. Gases that accumulate because they are heavy in the bottom of mines. I'm currently using a 3M7502 respirator. They have the 5P71 particulate matter filter. This is a new one. This is specifically designed for silica and asbestos. Because you don't only have to worry about the silica and you don't only have to worry about the gas. Asbestos was used in a variety of applications within the mining world and obviously that is going to be contaminated within those mines. So having one of these is incredibly important. And unfortunately the second cartridge on the back of this respirator is a 6001 by 3M. That cartridge in particular is used for things like solvents. Now I am upgrading this mask. And these filter packs, because whilst I've got the right particular filter, I don't have the right gas filter. Now I know that there are a lot of OH&S safety guys who are gonna give me absolute hell about having a beard, and I completely agree with that, which is why I'm upgrading my mask. It's gonna be a full face mask with positive pressure. I've literally got that on order and it has been shipped to me at the moment. And that is gonna come not only with the right particulate matter filters, but the right gas filters so that I can mitigate most of the gases that you will find accumulating within a mine. The reason I'm currently using this one is because of this wide rubber seal. This sits on your chin and this comes all the way up to your lip. So in other words, it's sealing around here. Again, yes, I know that there is hair here, but that inner seal at least goes to bare skin. And I feel like that is going to be much better than having one that sits only on the hair. Obviously the full face mask, is going to be better than that because that is going to come in and seal up around under my neck but we also do other things to ensure safety first and foremost we are no experts at going into these mines and we are learning and we're dipping our feet in the waters by going into shallow horizontal mines the longest mine we've gone into is 55 meters long and it is perfectly horizontal with an open entrance with no corners, meaning that there is airflow. You can physically feel the air pushing into that mine from the entryway. And that is important because it means that it's unlikely that any gases are going to be able to accumulate. It's horizontal, so there's nowhere for the gases to settle and it's got airflow coming in so it'll push anything that does form back out again. The real danger is when you go into vertical shafts where heavy gases can accumulate at the, at the bottom and nothing ventilates them out. So if you go down into a vertical shaft, especially if it's quite deep, you'll probably end up running into a whole heap of issues. I'm not ready to tackle that. I need a whole lot of specialized equipment to make sure that I'm safe. The second thing is I have many people in my life who have been underground for a living and I am lucky to benefit for, from their experiences in terms about structural integrity of mines, how to check, what to check, what to touch, what not to touch, when to back out, all of those things. I'm doing my due diligence on that and that is something that is difficult to learn. You need to talk to the right people and you need them to show you and that's what we're doing. Because we're only going into very shallow, horizontal adits, the number one indicator that the mine is probably relatively safe in terms of gases and structural integrity is that when you find animals in them, because more often than not, if there's an animal living in one of them, then the air in there is not killing that animal. It's probably unlikely to kill us. And I do change these filters very regularly. This is from one trip. This was a brand new filter when I went into the mine just yesterday. And as you can see, there is a little bit of a difference between them and this is why we use them. Look how dirty that thing is comparative to that. That's after one use. So I am going to 
replace my filters every time I go into a mine because I don't want to be sucking these in. The good thing is there's no discoloration on the back other than what I've just put on it from this table here. And there's also no discoloration on the inner filter. So I'm aware that I have a lot to learn and I'm probably not doing everything right at this stage. If you have links where I can read about this stuff, if you have suggestions for pieces of equipment and you have your own experiences that can help me benefit to proceed safely into this venture, I would love to hear about them. Please leave your comments below.